to sort of recap uh, the last time we went over uh, the shape of the earth um, and some of the basic datums, uh, the rotation of the earth, um, the definition of uh, latitude, longitude, what we mean by distance and uh, how the shape of the earth uh, has uh, made it necessary for us to arrive at a standard uh, distance of uh, 1852 meters as one nautical mile. Uh, I think that is where we let off last time. And we also did run over uh, D-lat and D-long. Um, and I will, I will do that one more time just in case uh, we need to. Uh, we will today run through the derivation uh, or the proof of the relationship, mathematical relationship between uh, D-long and departure. And uh, we will also express a mathematical relationship between uh, delat, departure, and distance. We won't prove it, but we will express the uh, relationship uh, in trigonometric format. And then use traverse tables to uh, uh, do the same thing in, in a much quicker way. Uh, it's a sort of a ready reckoner. Uh, we will solve one uh, day's work numerical. Uh, we won't do too many this time also because we have a few principles uh, to cover. Uh, then we will learn the all-important uh, task of uh, constructing a Mercator chart or at least understanding how it is constructed. And, uh, okay, I doubt if we'll have time for solving numericals on uh, long voyages. Okay, so th this is our... Uh, our uh, the remit of today's uh, class, uh, we will also try to understand the meaning of uh, meridional parts and the difference of meridional parts and how they come in to help us with the uh, use of the uh, calculation of distances and course, uh, arrival and final positions uh, at the end of a long voyage. Now, we quickly go back. Uh, difference of latitude is uh, quite simply the angle subtended by the arc of the meridian, AB. Let me see if I can get that pointer. Laser pointer, lovely. Okay, that is your arc AB of the meridian between two parallels of latitude. This is uh, initial and that is the final, or you can take it the other way around, this as the initial and this as the final parallel of latitude. So the arc of the meridian between the two parallels of latitude subtends an angle at the center of the earth and that is called d lat and numerically of course if both the initial and final lat are in the same hemisphere then the value of the d lat is nothing but the difference of latitudes that is the latitude of a minus latitude of b that would be your d lat now if the initial and final positions happen to be on opposite sides of the equator then the d lat will not be a difference, but it will be an addition. So it will be the latitude of A plus at latitude of B if they are on the opposite sides of the equator. Okay, there's your uh, example. And the name, again, um, naming of the d lat is very simple. We don't have to complicate our uh, sense too much. It is simply the direction of travel. We are dealing with traveling here. It is simply the direction of travel. And uh, I told you, numerically, it is equal to the algebraic difference. It is exactly the same with uh, D long. Now, that is your Greenwich or prime meridian. And... Uh, they are not mentioned A and B. Let us assume that this point is A and this point is B. So, when a ship travels from A to B, it could be along the equator. It could be from this point to this point. It could be from this point to this point. It could be from here all the way here. It doesn't matter. It, you have started on one meridian and you have arrived on another meridian. So, your D-long continues to be this much. It is still the arc of the meridian, subtending an angle at the center of the earth, okay, that is your D-long. 
between the departure and arrival meridian or the initial and final meridian. Okay, and numerically, of course, um, it is equal to the algebraic difference between the longitude of A and longitude of B. Okay, and as long as your uh, travel has been on the eastern hemisphere, that is uh, to the east of uh, Greenwich Meridian, then you you have to subtract the higher longitude, the lower longitude from the higher longitude. Okay, if you're on opposite sides of the Greenwich Meridian, then you have to numerically add the two longitudes in order to get the D-long. And again, the naming of D-long is quite simply the direction of travel. As I told you, uh, if you take this to be your uh, initial meridian and that as your final meridian, it doesn't matter which latitude is started and which latitude ended up in. For the purpose of D-long, all that matters is which meridian did you leave and which meridian did you catch. And that would be your D-long. Okay, now, whenever the... Okay, this is again a recap of what we did last time. But uh, we don't always travel along the parallel of latitude or along the equator. We, we Nor do we travel only along the meridian. Uh, we cut across sometimes the shortest distance between two points. So let us say that is your initial point and that's your final point and you have traveled along here. Now, the question is, which departure would you select? Because this departure is less, this departure is more. So what exactly is the departure of this vessel? So we have already agreed last time that we will take the mean of both these latitudes, this latitude plus this latitude divided by two. And we do that because both these latitudes are on the same hemisphere. Okay, then the mean lat would lie somewhere between these two. And that would be called the mean lat. If the initial and the final parallel of latitude are on opposite sides of the equator, then to get the deep mean lat, you will have to subtract the lower from the higher. So the, it is important for us to um, know the mean lat in order to arrive at the departure. Otherwise, we will not be able to know where to measure the departure from. So whenever you do your numericals, you will have to do uh, first figure out what is the mean lat and then you will be able to get the departure. Okay. So if you're fine with that uh, understanding of departure, um, in cases where the journey is along the parallel of latitude, then there is no discomfort, no problem uh, knowing what your departure is. In case it is moving on a north-south direction in addition to east-west direction, then we take the mean latitude and along that parallel of latitude, we measure the departure. So let us now try to derive the relationship between D-long and departure. I'm sure you have done this before, but uh, we will run this again. Now, again, uh, so apologies for the terrible diagram here, but that is your uh, initial meridian and that is your final meridian. So, A to B would be your D long. Okay. Now, let us assume that the vessel traveled from here to there with the mean lat being there, that being your mean lat. Okay, so the effective departure for this journey would become CD. So that is your C, CD becomes your departure, AB becomes your D long for the same journey. And we want to understand what is the relationship between this and this. Okay, now. For this, we'll have to do a bit of geometry and trigonometry. Let us go back to our fundamental understanding of uh, latitude and longitude. We draw from the center of the Earth, OA and OB. Similarly, from we draw a parallel sector. See, this is the segment of a uh, of a or a sector of a uh, circle. We draw a similar one out here. We draw PC and PD such that PC is parallel to OA. And this entire plane, PCD, is parallel to this plane, OAB. Right. Now, join O to C. 
okay and oc is the radius of the earth oa is also the radius of the earth now what is angle aoc anybody it is the latitude, latitude of that uh, place sir. latitude sir yeah it is the latitude of this parallel and we have uh, agreed that this is the mean latitude so for the journey that is the mean lat so what you have this angle is the latitude of this particular parallel of latitude okay so let us call that the lat or the mean lat and angle pco is the same as angle aoc can anybody tell me why this angle angle pco is the same as angle aoc with correspondent angle so, correspondent angle alternate sir. interior Not angles sir no no, no. <laughs> Alternate interior angles. Alternate because interior, yes. Al yeah, these two are parallel. Pi is pi to the O A. P C is pi yeah. to O A. That's why alternate interior. Correct. Yes. O A and P C are parallel to each other. So this angle and this angle are alternate angles because this is the transverse. So by geometry, this angle is the same as this angle, which is the latitude. So we can say that angle P C O, this angle is equal to the latitude. Okay. Now consider. this uh, i don't know whether you call it segment or sector i forget but pcd this is a slice of pizza and oab i have arranged them here okay now we know that oa is the radius of the earth okay and we know that ab is the d long expression minutes of arc that is this d long and we know that the cd is the departure so again from our knowledge of geometry these are two similar i won't call them triangles they are two similar sectors of a circle and similarity the rule of similarity tells us that the ratio of ab to cd the ratio of ab to cd is the same as the ratio of their respective radius is the same as ratio of oa to oc okay so ab divided by cd is equal to oa divided by oc that is what i have mentioned here arc cd by arc arc cd divided by arc ab that is nothing but departure divided by d long is equal to pc pc in this case it is oc okay that is pc pc divided by oa so we are now trying to get a value for pc so pc is equal to departure into oa by d long are you with me there yes sir c no okay look at the similarity we are, are we agreed that okay this dc or cd divided by ab is the same as pc divided by oa they are proportionate yes sir okay so cd is departure so departure by d long is equal to pc by oa Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. See here, you are confused because this is mentioned as O. Looking from top, P and O are one and the same at the same point. You just bring this slice of pizza down here and superimpose on this. You will find O and P are at the same place. Okay. Looking from top. So departure by d long, that is this by this, is equal to this. by this and instead of writing pc by oa can i write pc by oc yes sir because both both are radius both are radius. The, radius both are radius oa and oc are one and the same they are radius so instead of writing pc by oa i write pc by oc 
So I'll repeat now. Departure by D long is equal to P C by O C. Now, from your knowledge of a right angle triangle, what is P C by O C? This being equal to angle latitude. Okay, this is latitude or theta is latitude. What is adjacent side by hypotenuse? Cos theta. Cos theta. Yeah, it is cos of this angle. Cos. Cos. Cos theta. Yeah, you have to turn this triangle upside down in your head. So adjacent side by hypotenuse is cos theta, or in this case, theta is latitude. remember this is latitude this is also the latitude so pc by oc is nothing but cos of this angle or cos lat all right then we are concluding now with cd by ab being the same as pc by oa in other words departure by d long is equal to this by this which is nothing but cos mean lat or cos of this latitude okay departure by d long is equal to cos of latitude cross multiplying we will get departure is equal to d long into cos mean lat this is your relationship between departure and d long let me quickly read For you, sir. Which one is theta, sir? Here. Sorry. Which one is theta? Which angle is theta? Here? Theta is latitude. Angle A O C is latitude, which is equal to angle P C O because P C and O A are parallel lines. This is theta. Theta is equal to latitude or mean latitude. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. and because oa and oc are the same we find see initially we have established the relationship departure that is this arc divided by this arc is the same as this length divided by this length they are in the same proportion so once we have done that we have then gone on to substituting oa with oc because they are both radius of the same sphere so now we rewrite that as saying departure by d long is equal to pc by oc instead of saying pc by oa we are saying pc by oc and pc by oc is nothing but cos of this angle and this angle we know now is latitude got it sir understood sir thank you so cos of pc by oc is cos of this angle or cos lat so departure by d long is equal to cos of this latitude or if you consider that as the mean latitude then departure is equal to d long into cos mean lat okay let's quickly revise uh, true cos uh, we we did last time uh, run through the conversion of uh, three figure notation into quadrantal representation of course so i'll just give you a few examples here so that you understand if that is north east south and west 045 is written as north 45 east north 45 east and uh, 127 is south uh, 53 east okay this is incorrect these these have not been changed these are incorrect okay and if 252 degrees is represented as south 72 west and 335 please ignore these uh, numbers they are not being changed if course is 335 for example that is course 335 this angle is 335 that is written as north 25 degrees west this is the quadrantal representation we need this in order to use the traverse tables to solve our uh, plane sailing uh, numericals
Okay. Let me uh, drop a question to you. Uh, rumb line. Anybody has an idea what is a rumb line? It is a straight line course. Less than 600. Can't hear you. Straight line less than 600 nautical miles. No, I can't, I can't hear you at all. Okay, any any line and drawn on there. the surface of the earth. Any which, line with equal angle at every meridian. Yeah, it makes an equal angle with all the meridians. Meridian. Okay. A rumb line is any line on the surface of the earth which cuts all meridians at the same angle. So it, it can be a great circle, it can be a small circle, that is not uh, important. Um, but what is important is they should cut all the lines, all the meridians at the same angle. Okay. Now, all rumb lines with the one exception, that is two exceptions, meridians, you leave meridians and equator out of it. All rumb lines, if you keep extending them, they will eventually spiral into uh, either pole. That is the nature of rumb line that it eventually spirals itself into the pole. Okay. The equator is also a rumb line because it cuts all meridians at 90 degrees. The meridians are also rumb lines because they cut all meridians or their own meridian at 0 degrees. But what is important here is, okay, that is a rumb line. Now the plane sailing formulae. Okay, we have studied about DLAT, we have studied about uh, what course is and what is departure. And we know what is D long. Uh, and distance, of course, is the actual number of nautical miles covered by the, by the vessel. If you recall, this is the start journey of a ship. That is the final point, arrival point. And this length, if you measure in nautical miles, is the distance traveled by the ship. Okay, now we need to find a relationship between this distance, its departure, and DLAC. Okay, and of course, we know what a course is. That angle is the course in quadrantal representation. Or if you want 360 degree representation, that is the course of the ship. But remember, this is the distance traveled by the ship. Okay. Now, these are the three uh, formulae that you need to remember. DLAT, distance, force, departure are the four variables. Okay. Now, if you were to represent them in a trigonometric uh, manner, it would be very convenient. So, you draw a northeast, uh, southwest uh, sorry, north, south, uh, east, west uh, cardinals. And then the hypotenuse will represent the distance. The departure is represented by uh, the adjacent side, or in, sorry, in this case, it's the opposite side. And this angle is the course. And the adjacent side is the d -lat. So let us say the ship is traveling, say, 100 nautical miles. In a, on a course of 0, 4, 2. So 0, 4, 2 would take you 100 nautical miles up to that point. Then if you were to represent that to scale on a piece of paper, you can actually draw a triangle and you can obtain the departure by simply completing the triangle. The d lat would be represented by the north-south uh, length and the east-west length is the departure. And the course would be that much. Okay. So the D lat is equal to distance into cos cos. Do you understand that? D lat divided by distance, adjacent side divided by distance is equal to cos of this angle, which is course. So D lat by distance is cos course. Therefore, D lat can be written as distance into cos course. Similarly, departure by distance. What is it? Anyone? Sin. No, not tan. Sin. Sin, yeah. Depart sin. 
correct opposite side opposite side by hypotenuse is sine of this angle sine course so departure by distance is sine course or departure is equal to distance into sine course so now we have a relationship between d lat and distance and departure and distance and of course departure by d lat would be tan course tan course okay these three are important remember there are four variables d lat distance course departure now we know from uh, our basic algebra or trigonometry that if out of these four variables you are given three variables you can find out the fourth and that is all there is to uh, solving most of these numericals now you will be given various situations we will do the numericals at a later opportunity but uh, this with this trigonometric formula you can find out uh, the arrival or initial or final lat long if you are given these four variables or in fact if you are given three variables you can find the fourth and from there you can find out the uh, if you are given the initial uh, lat long you can find the final lat long if you are given the final lat long you can find the initial lat long okay and you can find the true course to steer and the distance to cover for any given initial and final long uh, final lat long that is if you are given arrival position or sorry if you are given uh, initial position and these parameters you can find the final position or if you are simply given the course and distance you can find the arrival and departure positions so are you with me so far as far as this uh, trigonometric uh, relationships are concerned yes sir yes sir yes sir captain krishnamurthy sir moderator yeah. here yeah one question raised by mr muthusamy mutayan yeah he needs the explanation of departure yeah he needs explanation of departure yeah yes sir okay so that is taking us back a bit but uh, we will do that okay um muttu swami is it yes sir right see e departure for any given journey is the east west displacement that the that person that uh, ship has undergone now if the ship has started let us say at this point and reached this point then this distance the arc of the parallel of latitude measured in nautical miles is the departure it is named east or west depending on the direction of travel similarly if a ship has started from this point and reached this point then departure of this ship is nothing but the actual distance covered by the ship from this point to this point along the parallel of latitude now that is departure for this ship this is departure for this ship please remember for both the ships the d long remains the same this angle at the pole or the arc of the meridian subtending a particular angle at the center of the earth is d long so even though both ships have the same d long this ship has got to cover a greater distance of departure a greater greater length of uh, departure and this ship has to cover a lesser length and as you go higher and higher you will have to cover lesser and lesser distance for the same d long now let us take a ship that travels from this point to this point now the question arises whether you are supposed to take this departure this as the departure or this as the departure so the convention here is to take neither but to take the departure along a parallel of latitude which is the mean arithmetic mean of both these latitudes suppose this latitude is 10 degrees and this latitude 20 degrees then you measure you take the 15th parallel that is 15 degrees parallel of latitude and measure the distance 
and say that is the departure along the mean lat for this particular voyage. Clear? Muttu Swami, I need your confirmation. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, so when yeah. in uh, in this case, departure is not equal to the actual distance traveled. Departure is not equal to actual distance traveled. Yeah, actual distance traveled is this. I told you. Let let me be clear. This is the distance traveled. This has a north south component and an east west component. Okay. We are only talking about the east west component. Departure is only the east west component. D lat is the north south component. And the relationship between the actual distance traveled, the departure, and D lat has already been given. Just now, I have given you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. All, all three. Okay. All right. So, let's move on to traverse tables. Now, how many of you have uh, actually got possession of a traverse tables? You may not have it now with you, but do you have a copy? No. Not right now at home. Not right now. Okay, but uh, fine. You can keep. Uh, uh, hopefully, you have a uh, scientific calculator with you, all of you, and a piece of pen and paper. You yes, sir. Yes, sir. Use, yeah, you can use the scientific calculator to verify if you wish. Uh, but I'll run through the traverse tables. Now, traverse tables are uh, Norris tables, very convenient tables. They are nothing but uh, a tabular format of these formulae. Okay, for ease of use, you are given these traverse tables. Now, the way to look at the traverse tables is, uh, of course. Uh, um, you you will have you can see this there is an angle mentioned here right at the top that is to be used for two purposes the first purpose is to use it for course of the ship true course of the ship this column gives you distance this column gives you d lat this column gives you departure so if you are given a particular course and a distance you can find out d lat and departure Okay, by simply going to that particular page which has the course that you are talking about, 32 degrees, and then let us say a distance of 124. So any ship that has gone on a course of 32 degrees, uh, you know, and uh, covered a distance of 124 nautical miles, will have a D lat of 105.2. Uh, okay, and uh, a departure of 65.7. Now, this is minutes, this is nautical miles. Okay, now it doesn't uh, show here, but uh, the traverse tables uh, gives uh, courses from 0 to 45, and then uh, from the bottom up, you, you, you can see that uh, D lat and departures are reversed. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, see that later when we actually get our hands on our traverse tables. But this is the table that you use to figure out. For a given course and distance, what is the delight? What is the departure? Okay. What What is that one suggest uh, below the curly bracket? Below the long and departure. This one. Curly okay. I'll, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Yeah. So the next thing is okay. We we have uh, we have the course. We have the distance. So we have found the delight. We have found the departure. With the delight, we can apply to the initial latitude to get the final latitude, correct? Yep. If you have found the D-lat, yes. yes. you can simply apply that and to the initial latitude and find the final latitude. Now, how would you name this D-lat? And how would you name the departure? For that, you need to know the quadrantal format of this. 32 degrees. Is it north, 32 east? or is it south 32 west, okay? You will have to convert your course into the quadrantal format. If the name here is north, then your delight is north. Because if your course is, no, is, course is not, not something uh, east, then obviously you have a northerly delight and an easterly departure. 
and if you have an easterly departure of course you have an easterly d long also okay so any course three figure notation course you convert it into a quadrantal format whatever name you get here will become the name of the d lat whatever name you have here becomes the name of the departure and d long okay so once you have the d lat you convert of course if it is 104.3 then you convert it into degrees and minutes how do you convert 104.3 into degrees and minute that would be equal to 1 degree and 44.3 minutes okay 104 minutes is 1 degree 1 degree is 60 minutes the remaining 44.3 minutes so 1 degree 44.3 is your d lat and if this was north then that would also be north if this is south this would be south you apply the d lat to your initial lat to get your final lat and once you have the final lat you need to find the final long okay but for final long you don't have d long you only have departure so what you need to do is from the final latitude and the initial latitude you find out the mean latitude sorry was there a question no sir all clear all clear all clear all right so i'll repeat from the initial lat you apply d lat and find the final lat and final lat plus d lat divided by 2 assuming both are on the same side of the equator both the initial and final lat and then you will arrive at mean lat now once you get the mean lat you already have the departure now you use the same traverse tables to find out for a given departure what is the corresponding d long because you d departure by itself will not help you get to final longitude you need to find out the d long okay. so either you can Uh, use your scientific calculator and the formula departure equals to d long into cos mean lat if you are not permitted so you will not be permitted to use your scientific calculators in the examination so you use the traverse tables and there you go to the page now the page that you should refer to will be the mean lat okay so suppose your mean lat is 32 degrees 30 minutes say now your mean lat happens to be 32 degrees 30 minutes that means 32.5 degrees north that is your mean lat then what do you do then you look at the page for 32 and for 33 and this will tabulate the relationship between departure and d long if your mean lat was 32 and your departure was uh, say how much was your departure it was 65.7 so you need to go down here and see for 65.7 what is the corresponding d long now you forget about the distance and d lat this will give you the departure and this will give you the corresponding d long if your mean lat is 32 degrees okay so that is how you find your departure uh, sorry that is how you find your d long against the corresponding departure now we want 32.5 so we have to go to the next one that is 33 and do the same exercise how much is the d long for a departure of 64.2 so 64. Point, uh, sorry 65.7 so 65.7 you go down this column and you will find the corresponding column here that is a d long column not a distance that is a d long column now and whatever is the d long is your answer okay so between 32 and 33 you have to interpolate i'll i think we have done an example here so given a course of north 32 east and a distance blah blah no not this okay this one now mean lat is given as 16 degrees 24 minutes south and d long is so much okay the mean lat to be read as 16.4 that is 16 degrees 24 minutes should be read as 16.4 i hope you understand why it is 0.4 yes divided by 60 yes, divided yes. by 60 24 divided by 60 is 0.4 so 16.4 so for 16 degrees you know your d long uh, departure would be so much and d long would be so much 
for 17 degrees, your departure would be so much, a D-long would be so much. Here we find that there is no major shift, but no interpolation required, okay? In fact, in this case, we have been doing the other way around. We are trying to find the departure for D-long. D-long is given. We are trying to find the departure here. Okay, but the principle is the same. You look up the traverse tables for 16 degrees, mean lat, for 17 degrees, mean lat. You find the corresponding relationship, that is the table between D-long and departure. And for a difference of 60 minutes, that is between 16 degrees and 17 degrees, the difference is 60 minutes. For a difference of 24 minutes, that is 0.4 degrees, how much is it? So you interpolate and you'll get the difference to be added to this or subtracted from this depending on what is the sign here. Now, one of the biggest problems is how do you represent, because you need to make charts in order to navigate. Uh, you can't navigate on a three-dimensional uh, globe. Uh, and plot your positions. So, how do you represent the surface of a three-dimensional globe onto a two-dimensional charts? Now, there are various ways of projecting it. And one of the more uh, popular ones is uh, a Mercator projection, the one that you see here on the screen. Now, the simple way to look at it is imagine the globe to be a transparent uh, glass ball with all the meridians, equator, parallels of latitude drawn on it, and a source of light at the center of the globe. And now you take uh, your chart paper and roll it right around the globe in such a way that this cylinder so formed by wrapping the chart around the globe is tangential at the equator. Okay, this cylinder will be just touching at the equator and nowhere else. Now switch on the and all the all the uh, uh, shadows of the equator, the parallels of latitude, the meridians will project themselves on to this paper. And let's say it's a photographic paper; it will capture the contours of all the continents and land masses, it will capture, more importantly, the meridians, the equator, the parallels of latitude. And when you roll out the chart, it will look like this. Okay. Now, this has a certain, uh, any chart, in fact, whenever you try to convert a three-dimensional uh, surface to a two-dimensional surface, there will be distortions. Distortion basically means there will be a change in its uh, shape or size. Okay. As long as we are able to uh, measure those distortions, we can still use the chart for navigational purposes. And a Mercator chart we can use for navigational purposes because whatever distortions happens, we are able to mathematically calculate how much is the distortions. You know, in the north-south direction, how much has it distorted? On the east-west direction, how much has it distorted? So there are other types of projections. Uh, you know, we have seen Mercator projections. This is called a mnemonic projection. Uh, that is, you have placed the chart at the top of, uh, uh, let us say, one point. Uh, it can be North Pole or anywhere else. And uh, then from the center, you project all the lights. This is mnemonic. If the light is here and you project it, then you have a stereographic. And if the light is parallel, then you have what is called orthographic. Okay. These are charts not very often used uh, by the navigator today. Uh, and of course, there is a conical projection. Again, you have the light at the center and then you have these kind of representations. We will not deal much with these kind of projections. We will just look at the features of the market projection for now. Now, all meridians appear to stretch out. Okay, Whereas we know that actually the meridians are all converging. In this Mercator projections, strangely, all the meridians seem to be parallel to one another. That means they seem to have been stretched out. You know, they're supposed to converge, but they've been stretched out to become parallel to one another. So obviously, there is an east-west distortion. Okay. And if you notice carefully, the 
uh, north south distance is also proportionately increasing as you go up either latitude either hemisphere you know when you go to higher latitudes you find that the north south spacing between uh, equal latitudes it is stretching more and more okay so there is an east west distortion as well as a north south distortion now we let us try and measure what those distortions are now what should be the distance between two meridians uh, at a higher latitude that should be equal to the departure isn't it but here we find it is equal to d long no matter how much you go the uh, distance between two meridians is equal to d long and it is not reducing as we go along in other words it is being stretched out the departure is being stretched out to become equal to d long so how do we define distortion distortion ratio let us say if you take a piece of rubber band um let us say that rubber band is 10 cm long and you stretch it to be equal to uh, 20 cm length now the distortion ratio would be the new length 20 cm divided by the old length original length that is 10 cm so the distortion ratio is 2 20 divided by 10 that is sorry 2 divided by 1 that is 2 uh, uh, okay so if you have uh, similarly stretched out what was originally departure and you have stretched it out to become equal to d long then the distortion ratio would be equal to d long divided by departure yeah when you have stretched the meridians outward that is to the left and right to be made equal to d long then the new length is equal to d long and the original length was equal to departure new length divided by original length is nothing but d long divided by departure that is equal to secant lat in other words the distortion ratio here is equal to secant lat secant of the lat depending on the latitude and you know secant 0 is 0 that means sorry secant 0 is 1 and uh, secant 90 is infinity okay at the equator secant 0 is 1 so d long and departure are one and the same which is what it is we know that departure and d long are the same at the equator but as you go higher and higher the distortion ratio is equal to secant of that lat now another feature you will notice here is that the shape of all the continents and the land masses have not been uh, changed you know greenland looks exactly like this even on the globe north america looks just like this on the globe the only difference is that the size has increased in fact greenland has, is looking so much bigger than india whereas uh, it is not as big it is it is much smaller so the this the distortions on the east west and the north south is uh, exactly the same and therefore the uh, shape is retained but the size has enlarged okay that is one of the things that happens on the mercator projections and the final thing is you cannot capture arctic regions very effectively because the distortion is so high that we cannot capture the arctic uh, regions and the antarctic regions the other advantage is that a rumb line would show as a straight line if you were to draw a line cutting across all meridians at the same angle that is the rumb line and your rumb line track would look like a straight line so it's very easy to put a parallel ruler and draw these lines of course a great circle which is the shortest distance between any two points would show as a uh, as a curve but we will deal with that uh, subsequently measuring distance is a little tricky because uh, of course you, you all know that you have to measure distance very carefully if you are measuring distance between any two points in this region then you will have to measure it against the latitude scale here let me explain why okay i have explained to you the distortion ratio now we have dealt with the east west distortion okay that is how when the meridians get stretched out we find that they are stretched out to equal to d long so d long divided by departure 
uh, will give you the distortion ratio of secant of the lat. Now, north-south uh, distortions. Now, this chart, bring it close. I have not been able to, but bring it close so that it is tangential to the equator at this point. In other words, uh, OC is the same as OA, even though I have put a distance between the two. Now, A represents the equator and B represents the parallel of latitude or this, this parallel represents the parallel of latitude at this point D. So in other words, D is projected to the chart as B. Now, what has happened to the north-south distance. Is this distance the same as this distance? Is AB the same as CD? CD? No, sir. no, it is not. It is obviously got stretched out. By how much has it got stretched out? We find the distortion ratio. That is, we find AB, which is the new length, divided by CD, which is the original length. Okay. So, CD is the arc of a meridian uh, which is subtending an angle theta which is nothing but the latitude. Okay? And OC and also in fact OA because remember I told you this you have to assume is to be superimposed with C. So, A is right on top of C. So, OA is nothing but the radius of the earth. Okay. OA is the radius of the earth. Bring this chart very close to the equator. Let the equator be in touch with the equator. Then OA is the radius of the earth. Now in triangle AOB, that is AOB, AB by OA is the distortion ratio, isn't it? AB, sorry, AB by OA is the tan of this latitude. You agree? A, B, yes, O, A is the tan of latitude. Therefore, A, B is equal to R into tan lat. Okay. A, B is equal to, yes. to tan of this latitude. Now, C, D if some of you remember your uh, school geometry is nothing but r into sin theta for any circle r sin theta is the length of the arc where r is the radius and theta is the angle okay so cd can be represented as r sin theta so ab by cd can be represented as r tan theta by r sin theta R and R get cancelled, so you are left with tan theta by sin theta, which is nothing but secant theta or 1 by cos theta. So, what we find here is the distortion ratio here from A to B. How much has it got distorted from the original length of CD is by a value equal to secant of that latitude. Higher the latitude, greater the distortion. In fact, if it goes higher and higher towards the North Pole, uh, as you know, secant latitude tends towards infinity. So that is the reason you cannot represent the northern Arctic regions or the uh, Antarctic regions on a Mercator projection. But what we have found here is AB by OA is tan of this latitude. Okay, So R into tan lat is the value of AB, so R tan lat, and this is R sin lat, CD. So, R tan lat by R sin lat is 1 by cos lat or equal to secant lat. So, what we have found here is both the north-south distortion ratio and the east-west distortion ratio are both equal to secant of the lat. In other words, the advantage of a Mercator chart is that the amount of distortion that happens on the east-west direction is equal to the amount of distortion that happens on the north-south direction. Okay? Okay. Captain Krishnamurti, sir. Yeah. Moderator here. 
Yeah. Ah, uh, it's one ten now. Yeah, I'll finish in three minutes more. This is the last okay. slide. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, when you draw a chart, um, you have uh, you have something called a scale. That is, uh, when you say one is to fifty thousand, it simply means one centimeter on the map. Means five hundred thousand, sorry, fifty thousand centimeters or five hundred meters on the ground itself. Okay. Now, when you construct a chart, we use a concept called meridional parts. And meridional part is nothing but a value that is corresponding with a latitude, a given latitude. And the definition is here: meridional parts of a latitude is simply the number of units of d long scale. that fits into the mercator chart between the equator and a given latitude okay since we know that the north south uh, distortion is uh, equal to secant of the lat the meridional part gives you how many units of d long suppose you have constructed a chart uh, representing 1 uh, degree of uh, d long as equal to 10 cm okay so how many um, such units how many centimeters will go into uh, the space between or uh, the north south scale between equator and the parallel of that particular latitude so that is meridional parts okay the number of units of d long that fit into the uh, space between the equator and that particular latitude is meridional parts and that takes into account the distortion uh, on the mercator scale as well as uh, the fact that the earth is an oblate spheroid it takes into account and uh, the number of meridional parts are tabulated in your traverse tables okay and difference of meridional parts is the difference between suppose you take two latitudes the difference between the D, meridional parts of latitude a minus meridional parts of latitude b if they are on the same side of the equator if they are on the opposite sides of the equator then you have to add up the meridional parts to get the difference in meridional parts now the reason why i am dealing with dmp is uh, for long voyages dmp is the scale uh, that you use in order to obtain accurate uh, course and distance course departure d long uh, your your level of accuracy is much higher when you are dealing with uh, dmp so your plane sailing formula earlier that we have given Uh, the relationship between d lat departure distance and course is limited to about 600 nautical miles after which uh, uh, you will have to apply mid lat corrections and other things so dmp is another method of uh, finding out your traverse tables gives you your meridional parts for corresponding to each latitude it is nothing but on a mercator chart how many units of d long scale fit into uh, the space between the equator and that particular latitude that is your meridional parts Thank you.